All right, we are live. We are. What a weekend. Oh, man. What? We're feeling good. Feeling good? 2-0? and oh. high. 2-0. and oh. Can't beat that. 2-0. Oh. Can't unless beat that, man. Unless you're 3-0, and oh, but... That's Unless you're beside, yeah. <laughs> beside the point. <laughs> yeah. So we're heading uh, in the right direction. Exactly. We're going upwards. Grizz Nation, this is a new episode of Fight on Montana. Uh, we are going to, in this episode, just recap the uh, dominating performance with South Dakota. Uh, we will then go also do a Grizz update first, and then we'll go into the Indiana State Sycamores. Sycamores? Sycamores. Sycamores, yeah. I Sycamores. think so, yeah. Um, and we'll preview that one as well. So uh, before we get into the episode, though, we would love for you to uh, rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, uh, Spotify. Um, also, we are on the FCS Nation's uh, YouTube network. You can mm-hmm. uh, hit us up there. You can leave comments about our videos. You can subscribe. Uh, it's a great network. It's just not Montana. It is all over Jacksonville State, North Dakota State, South Dakota State. Uh, pretty much any team that you want. Uh, not every team, but uh, the good teams anyways uh, are <laughs> there. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's kind of a super niche community. You know, just yep. gives you the opportunity to kind of not only check out what's going on in Montana, but gives you the opportunity to check out what kind of happened all around FCS football. Um, exactly. So, again, that's FCS Fans Nation on YouTube. We are on there um, alongside some other great podcasts that put out some great contact uh, content. So, just make sure to, you know, again, rate, review, subscribe, check us out, let us know what you think, and we'll kind of take it from there, man. Exactly, man. But before we get to our episode, uh, we got we got Grizz updates, man. Grizz updates. Let Grizz us know what's going updates. on. So, uh, let me see here. I got, I got uh, soccer. Soccer Sweet. was killing it this week, man. Uh, they ended up Colorado State at Colorado State, a tie going zero mm-hmm. zero with Colorado State. Uh, on Sunday, they came, they were it was it was heartbreaking, man. <laughs> they were up one nil, uh, until like the 90th minute, and Fresno State got a goal, uh, ended up tying that game up. Uh, they do play this Thursday uh, against Boise State at Boise State. And yeah. then they play sun, Sunday at, in Missoula versus North Dakota State. So some jam-packed uh, non-conference soccer. If you have yeah. not seen them play, definitely go support them in Missoula if you're there. And it looks like they're on ESPN Plus, too, on Sunday. So that's exactly. a good thing. ESPN Plus. You can find, I believe, all their games on ESPN Plus. They have them uh, streaming there. You can kind of find them there as well. Perfect, um, perfect. But, yeah, definitely go support them. They – uh I believe they're they're like two, two, and four, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of weird because man, that's a lot of ties. So that means that they're playing teams really tough, and uh, they're going to be good this conference. Yeah, competitive. Season. That's what I see it as. You exactly. want the dub, though. You want the dub. You want the dub. You got to turn those ties into dubs. Yep. That's all we need. That's all we need. Uh, Grizz volleyball. Grizz volleyball had a little bit of a harder week this last weekend. Uh, they went to the uh, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley tournament. Uh, they played Prairie View AM. They won that one three mat uh, three matches to one. And then they played, I believe they played U or University of Texas, whatever, Rio Grande, and they got swept by them pretty good. I think both times. I think yeah. they played them both times. Um, but they do have a, another uh conference or not conference sorry wow <laughs> a non-conference uh, uh tournament this week and they are in charleston uh south carolina, south carolina. yep yeah man uh that, that would be nice I, I hear south carolina charleston south carolina is a really cool city to go to Dude, so. you know what I, I i hear the same thing you know yeah. these past i think these past two years i've been uh, i've been able to go over to uh nashville tennessee uh-huh. And I heard South Carolinas or just the Carolinas in general are even better. I heard they're just so I've awesome to be at. Yeah, I've heard that too. So I got to. I get mean, but what a there. travel for the team, though. Oh, I know, right? That yeah. that that. Well, and and going from Texas to home to South Carolina while also doing school, uh, you got to give that those ladies that mad props for for getting it point. done in the classroom and then also getting it done on the floor. So, yeah, um, yeah, salute. Exactly. So they play this Friday. Uh, against the College of Charleston and against UNC Greensboro and finish 
Saturday at Charleston Southern. Um, so go support them. I do believe that is on ESPN plus as well. So you can watch that there as well. So, uh, going on to men's tennis, they have and no really updates, but they do have a invitational this weekend, uh, the Boise state invitational. Uh, and so the women are not there. They have a, a an invitational the following week. So this is just the men's tennis. They are there Friday through Sunday in Boise, Idaho. So, yeah. You know what? I'll be there this weekend in Boise, Idaho, too. So shout out. I might have to go stop by. There you go. There you go. Watch some, some tennis, man. Yeah, dude. Uh, cross country, women's and men's cross country is in the uh, down the line cross country classic uh, here on Saturday. So uh, that, that'll be a good one. I think they... They were in Bozeman probably a week ago, and they had like a little shorter, condensed one. Um, mm-hmm. And so it'll be interesting to see how how the Grizz improve and and see what happens there. Yeah, and then it'll be tempered territory too. So we're we're gonna have to see. Exactly, exactly. Uh, last Grizz update, guys, uh, is the golf. Golf is at the Kelsey Chug Invitational in Eden, Utah. Uh, I guess Weber State's putting that on. It is Monday through Tuesday of the following week. Uh, so give a shout out to golf out there. And man, I, I just, I just really appreciate the golf because I just do not have a golf game. So <laughs> yeah, you told us that you're like uncle said, like, hey, maybe this isn't for you. you remember yeah, you that? yeah. Well, he didn't say it that nice. He's like, oh. yeah, it's not, it's not in the cards, man. It's not working out, buddy. Yeah, he's Maybe like, you know, you got other things that you're good at, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, there's just no help for you. So, Jesus, um, the discourager, man. Yeah. Shoot, I might, I, I might, I might change my name and pretend to be a student just so I can go learn how to play golf. See if there I can roll. Go. There you go. Well, you have, mm-hmm. you, you have a go- golf course in, in Missoula. I've got to hit that up. So you've been talking about that. Well, I mean, so. yeah, I mean, we got, we got plenty out here, man. I mean, I live right next to Canyon, so I'm always up the yeah. road. That's my favorite golf course. You know, you can't beat university. Just bring back so much good memories because that's where I started playing. You know, and then you got Linda Vista, and then you can go out to really wherever you want to, man. So, I don't know, man. I I think I've hit every single one at least around the surrounding Missoula area. Um, next place to just kind of go explore a little bit. You know, a little bit across the state and maybe near up towards Idaho. I heard there's some good courses out there. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Cool, man. Well. That is it for Grizz updates. Uh, let's go into the South Dakota recap, man. Well, let's talk about the game. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so obviously, big game for us uh, coming off a hot win. Um, really, kind of the expectations were high. You know, yeah. everybody saw that first game and they said, "How much better can we possibly get?" You know, giving the Northwestern State the business. Um, I guess it was just that same assumption that it was going to happen again this week, and I think we handled it very well. I mean, we ended up with a score of 24-7, scored 13 points in the first quarter, zero in the second, but we finished strong with nine and two in the third and fourth, um, which ultimately led us to a dub, man. But I guess just right off the bat, Adam, what were your thoughts on the game? Well, you know, it's kind of hard to – you can't really judge the two wins just based off of each other because not nothing against Northwestern State, but – the teams are totally different. South Dakota or yeah. South Dakota is coming from a conference that's the Missouri Valley that is a, you know, probably number one, number two with the big sky. Uh, totally two different teams. South Dakota yep. was a uh, a playoff team last year. And so they had some people coming back. But from the start, man, that their quarterback did not feel comfortable back there. No, um, I felt I felt really bad. I believe he was sacked five times, dude. Uh, as the game went on, uh, he 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 got you know, so he got hit, and then I saw him lay longer and longer <laughs> and longer, and you could tell, you know, really right off the bat, he was just like, dude, I don't want, do not want to be here. I don't want to play this team. You yeah. know, I want to see what I can do and just get the heck out of here. You know, I don't know that competitive side that I expected on. From South Dakota, you know, it dwindled real fast. Yeah, real well, fast. It, the, one of the hits, like, in, I think it was the third quarter, either Patrick or Marcus hit the guy, and he like laid down, and he made the pass. And it was a, it, if he wouldn't have gotten hit, it probably would have been a catch down the field. But mm-hmm. man, he got up and he was holding his back, and 
oh man, it, it was it was not good. He, he yeah. felt the pressure because he was overthrowing. Uh, he was underthrowing. Um, you know, we knocked one of the really good wide receivers out with Wesley Elador, which he he looked like he was like knocked out out. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah, it was scary. And oh that's my the thing, gosh. you know, we said this before the game. We hope those guys are okay. You yeah. know, that there's not actually major damage that's going to, you know, kind of hinder them the rest of the season. But, yep. man, our defense yeah. gave them the business all yeah. game long. Yep. Jesus Christ. I mean, really, really just kind of – and that's the tough part I said last week. I think I mentioned it last week. It's so hard to keep up with our defense. You know, yeah. it's such a unique type of scheme. It's such a unique way of playing. And, you know, and when you have, you know, Eli and Gubby up there playing as good as they are playing, you know, they're yeah. going to make plays just as much as any other guys, you oh, know, yeah. which is I think it's the big difference from last year to this year is that last year you can kind of really tell that a lot of those, you know, that defensive front didn't get a lot of shine, weren't making a whole lot of plays simply because they were making room for those linebackers to kind of creep in, you yeah. know, make some big plays and, you know, just be the guys. This year, that is not the case. Eli no. and Gubby are not taking that lightly. They're taking every chance to get, and they're destroying people on the inside. They are De'Ari De Tart too. Yep. I mean, just absolutely annihilating some of those guys. And it's hard to keep your eyes, you know, disciplined, you know, from an offensive line standpoint. You know, I remember when I played, I was doing the same thing. Sometimes I was just like, oh, shoot, this is going way too fast. <laughs> you know, I need to pick it up here. And yeah. it was the same exact thing with those guys. You know, at first they try to do what they can, but slowly but surely – the same tempo, the same aggression. It just wore them out. Well, by the third, by the end of the first quarter, you, I, I, I bring it back to like a boxing mentality, right? It's like a, a heavyweight that's like on the verge, and he just needs that one last blow to like really like make him like down for the yeah. count. Like they were teetering by the end of the first quarter. It, it we didn't really get that like ending. Like I, I totally believe if we had one more touchdown, it would have been like uh, it's done, and not not necessarily did the the football team or the offense not really get it done. It was just not as when you're when you're comparing the the defense with the offense, you've got lights. You know, you're watching the defense like anything can happen, uh, and the the offense right now is just not as glistening or sparkly as as the defense is right now um mm -hmm. one area though I, I since we're talking about the defense one area that is looming to me and not not to nitpick or anything like that but one thing that was kind of a, a trouble last year was over the middle right and luckily you know south dakota did not get any of those passes but they were going and they knew what we what was something that we could they could get against us is those deep passes over the middle uh, with their wideouts going against some of our safeties, they didn't get connect with those. With they were overthrown, but that is something we need to probably watch out for. See how that develops. See if maybe I don't know. You know, Bobby does this, and Angel, you probably do too, know this too. Is he, he doesn't show all of his cards, right? He he lets you see what you want to see. And so, is this what we want to see? Is this something that they're just kind of showing? Or is this, you know, how they're really going to play it? Um, I would probably think it's probably the first one that rather than the second one, because those defensive coaches are, are, are studs and they know what they're doing. Um, so, you know, that kind of just really, really makes me kind of nerved is just the, the deep passes over the middle, because honestly, we're not going to be really seeing a team that really can take advantage of that till maybe – I want to say Sacramento State because their quarterback can throw the ball, but they're really more going to probably want to run the ball too, but and then Eastern Washington. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not going to have to worry about it for a little bit, but something to watch out for and, and to see how well they get better and develop at that. Yeah, and like one thing that you kind of mentioned right now, it's just obviously they were trying to do their best. Obviously they had a game plan. You know, but like you said it right now, they got punched in the mouth. They weren't able to execute it. Yep. And a big part of that is their offensive line just struggled really trying to just, just trying to keep up with our defensive front, our defensive schemes, you know, the bit the blitz packages that we were throwing their way. And so it leads to the question of, hey, when we actually find a team that's really competitive on that offensive line front and they're yep. able to give their quarterback some time, how was that going to look? Because like yep. you said it correctly, I think for these next you know, three games, you know, maybe even two games, two, three games, you know, I think it's going to be, you know, kind of how it was these past two weeks, just kind of a rollover. Yeah. And once we meet and kind of match up with the team, 
you know, obviously late in the season and even going into the playoffs, how are we going to react when they actually have some time to be able to read the field, throw the ball, and where they're going to try to expose, you know, our defense? Who knows? Yep. You know, because like you said, with so early on in the season, I think uh, I think we know that's one of those things, and it's that expectation when these players come to a game, hey, that we're going to come out with a W. It's that yep. same expectation week in and week out, but obviously with these upcoming, you know, couple games, it's even more of an expectation, you know? Obviously in the game of football, nothing's guaranteed, you know, but like you said, Bobby's not going to show all his cards until he needs to show them. It's exactly. a chess match. You know, I mean, you even hear people, you know, is he out for the game? Is he coming in? You know, kind of the question to play your personnel. And then once you find out game day when they run out of the tunnel and who lines <laughs> up in front of you, that's when you're first finding out if you have a Marcus Knight, if an offensive lineman is down, you know, those sort of things, because he's so strategic with it. You know, yeah. he wants it to be a guessing game. And so because of that, you don't really know what's up Bobby Sleeve, but you just know that, hey, the cards aren't all being shown right now, at least. Exactly, exactly. Well, and some you know, some big things this week happened. Um, I believe that I heard O'Connell is in the top 10 in tackles for loss and also yeah. sacks. Yeah. And then Robbie is, I think, like 17 tackles away from being the all-time leader in tackles. That's crazy, man. So that's crazy. Isn't that all nuts? time leader in ten? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that that's cool, dude. I mean, congratulations to both those players. You know, yeah. and and one of the things is 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 man, Patrick had such a great year last year. He's looking the top of this year, you know. It looks even better, man. Yeah. Yeah, by 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 I mean that's the scary part about it. You thought he was good last year. We're gonna see what he's able to do this year. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I'm kind of interested in seeing is 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 Flink. You know, he's stood out to me these past couple games. Obviously, yeah. special teams play, getting in the rotation, those sort of things. And so I'm just kind of thinking, is he the next guy on that on that in that linebacker position that's yeah. really gonna take the realms and kind of take it to the next level? I don't know, but yeah. I mean I'm making an early prediction now that I, I expect big things from him and I think he has the same expectation for himself because that boy can play. Well, even like even like Braxton Hill, like he's been he's been doing it too, man. And oh, that's so, true. yeah, hundred like percent. Right. Both of the both of those guys are just like they're they're playing really well. So <laughs> it's like who who do you go to? You know, Marcus mm -hmm. has had some great great times on the field, and so they, they've got some backups. So even Levi Janicaro, you know, I'm I'm you know I'm proud of him on how he's been doing with special teams, uh, not just on the linebacking side, but that that linebacking core is is is, is they're also all stars. Dude, and that's kind of what I'm curious about. How do you think that that I guess that time that rotation is going to change throughout the season? Do you think it's going to change much, or you think they're going to be kind of how they are these past couple games? You know, kind of giving everybody their equal share. You know, trying to get in the guys wherever they can. Or do you think it's going to be, hey, you know, you're going to see Flink to start take more of a, you know, aggressive playing time, or you're going to see, or kind of just how it is. I guess. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I. I honestly like with the way the way that they do their scheme. I really don't think that they're going to be saying, "Hey, this is our you know, uh, Patrick, you're out there for ninety percent of the snaps because you just can't do that with this type of defense." I think you just wear people wear the person out. So, mm -hmm. um, do they probably favor one core than the other? I think they probably will. But mm -hmm. I, I really do think that they're going to probably split up time to really be able to save the bodies and save the you know the legs on these guys um, further down, um, yeah. which you know, only helps the defense with developing players because if one gets you know possibly hurt, knock on wood, we don't want that to happen. But you've got backups upon backups. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too from a strategic standpoint. You know, as the season kind of progresses your body just starts to dwindle, dwindle yeah. on you, you know, whether you like it or not, no matter how much time you're spending in the training room, no matter what you're feeding yourself in the body. It's yep. just one of those things when you're hitting full grown men that hard for so long, it's going to start to take a little bit of effect on your body. And I think that's a perfect strategy, especially late in the year, you know, making sure those guys get, you know, a pretty even ish. Obviously you have your guys that you kind of rely on those sort of things, but I think getting people in that rotation is only going to help save bodies going to help them feel fresher for longer throughout the season so i think that's a smart thing to do and it's so good for experience when you're thinking about building a program i mean being able to rotate some of those younger guys or those guys that aren't the guy yet it's just going to do wonders for the program for years to come 
you know, because now from being, hey, now we got one star linebacker and one that's right behind them. You have three, four guys on a rotation that each can play equally as good and, you know, basically keep you guys fresh as long as possible. Exactly. And, and that's just not a, just want the linebackers. That's, you know, the safety, that's cornerbacks, wherever you yeah. look, they've got yeah. backups upon backups. So um, really good, uh, really good defense. And it's only going to get better, I think, this year. Yeah, And that's one of the things, too. One of the things, obviously, Justin Ford, I mean, what a dog. Yeah. I mean, just being able to play. But I mean, like you said, just that position, you know, Dawson, and, you know, and then Corbin, you know, Corbin had a couple plays. Yeah, had a couple plays. Yep. He, had, he, had, he had a couple plays where, uh, you know, he, but again, just being able to have that backup from the other defensive guys, I mean, it made up for it. And I think yep. that's the beautiful part about this. You see one guy make a minor mistake or maybe get beat on a route a little bit. You know, it's one of those things where you have, you know, 10 other guys that are flying to the ball that got your back. And I yep. think that's what makes this defense so special because it's not necessarily, oh, you got beat. The guy takes it for a 20-yard uh, pass and – you know, it's like, no, as soon as they catch the ball two years past the receipt or past the corner, you got 10 other guys flying to take your head off. And I think oh, yeah. that that effort is what really kind of makes them different as a unit completely. Um, and so because of that, man, I'm just super excited for it, man. Again, it's too early to really tell. Yeah. Again, once we start hitting that back in the back half of the season, that's when we're really going to be able to see what this defense can do. But uh, until then, maybe let's just keep on rolling. Man, and they fly so fast to the ball. Yeah. It, it is nuts. It, like mm-hmm. torpedoes going in there, and man, the safeties come in there too. And just oh man, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it's impressive to watch. It's really fun to watch. But uh, I will say th- this, man. I will say this. Fauci should have had that pick. He should have oh, had that oh, pick. If he would have oh, caught my that, God. there was no one gonna catch oh, him. Oh my, no they, one. They, there might have been one guy that he had to make miss, man. I was kind of oh, thinking man. about it, but he should have had that dude. Oh, it was right was in his there, hands. I was just shaking my head and I was just <laughs> like, man, I wanted to text him and be like, that's why you're on defense. That's why you are not a receiver. You <laughs> he know? Said some bad <laughs> yeah, he, he would have been pissed, man. Uh, but oh my god. He knows he should have had it. That's the fun part about it, you know? Yeah. Oh man. And so I wanted him to have it so bad because we uh, just talked about him last week. I was just like, dude, oh, I'm yeah. really impressed with this play. I'm yeah. really impressed how he stood up. So how cool would that have been to have one on his uh, on his uh, on the stat on the stat list? But yeah, it's all good. Not. We got more games, more opportunities. You know, exactly. again, at the end of the day, we're two and that's all that really matters. And that's one thing that I'm kind of interested in, or kind of yeah. uh, kind of a little frustrated with just fans are. You know, fans are making it seem like it's the end of the world. I don't. I don't. I- no, I don't think it's the end of the world because it's two, two. I mean, we're two and zero, oh, right? Yeah, but, but are, I mean, just reading some things. people on Facebook, I just feel like people are like, "Hey, we didn't perform. We're not going to win games." Like, slow your roll. It's the second game yeah. of the year. We got some time. But we're going to be okay. Yeah, I, I do see some some things that we need to fix. Uh, the defense is going to be stout. I think the offense. Um, there's some things that. Are they showing us what they want? You know, kind of thing. The same thing with the defense. Um, you ready to go to the offense, man? You want to go to the offense? Yeah, let's go. Let's go to the offense. offense. So, yeah. uh, one thing that was crazy is that I have kind of a question for is just Johnson, man. He he continues to to ball out, right? And he has another what two touchdowns on legs? I think he has. Have, yeah, two touchdowns, to one throwing. Yeah. Yeah. So this to this point, he's had 20 rushes on the season. Um, I just don't know. One of my questions is I don't know how long you can run a quarterback that often as it's in your kind of package of your offense, how long that can be, you know, consistent over the mm-hmm. time of the the year i think that you need to kind of develop something a little bit differently that kind of worries me um i know that it's in his repertoire but man you're taking some hits man you're you're gonna not be there for the end of the year uh man obviously that's not the that's not hope that's the you know that's the other end of the stick when you really kind of look at it but i i truly don't believe i mean i i don't believe that's really kind of something that they look for you know i think that's just an instinctual thing on his end to really kind of fill the pocket where are we kind of at? Where do I have to make those reads? Is Do I have the time to make those reads and get the ball downfield? Or yeah. is this something I have to take into my own hands? And if I see it for a 10-yard gain for first down, am I going to take that? 
or if I see it for a four yard run for a touchdown like he did this past Saturday, mm -hmm. am I going to take that? Is it planned? You know, so I don't necessarily think that the coaches are necessarily planning to have him run as much as he does. Yeah. I think, do they have that trickled in there? Of course they do because they want to utilize his athleticism. But I mm -hmm. think ultimately, you know, it's just about getting comfortable. It's just yeah. about the offensive line, getting comfortable with him and vice versa. As I said last week, I will say the offensive line, I think, performed a little bit better this week. Yeah, you know, I kind of saw that. Yeah. I saw that in the run game. And so against, you know, a potential playoff teams for this upcoming year, you yeah. know, so which is something that we talked about. How could you get, can you guys possibly be, you know, I think with Harris, I feel the same way, you know, God forbid. I mean, you saw it kind of last year with Cam, you know, yeah. he took a couple of opportunities to gain a couple of yards and it ended up being that, you know, he hurt himself a little bit. Yeah. And obviously we are looking to avoid that. But at the same time, I do think that the experience Lucas, Lucas has, I think I feel a little bit more comfortable with him doing that, you know, yeah. if that's what he chooses to do. Yeah. And he's a little bit bigger than Cam too. So yeah. he can probably, you know, take the hits a little bit. I just don't know, how, you know, with the, the duration of it's the, not the ideal. Season. Yeah. It's not mm -hmm. ideal. You know, also, you know, does, and this is just a question. I, I have no clue. But it's a question that kind of came up when I was uh, watching the game. It's awesome to have four running backs, right? Yeah. It's awesome. They're all averaging crazy, you know, over four um, yards of carry. But does that using four running backs kind of harness from getting into, uh, you know, a groove for one of them? Like if you it, does it harness them from kind of feeling it as as people would say? Yeah, that's a really good point. I never really thought about that. I mean, potentially. Yeah. I mean, potentially, you know. You, you don't, you know, it's not like basketball. When you're feeling it, you're feeling it, and, you, you know, you don't want someone to take over. But I, I don't know. I, I'm not a running back. I never was a running back. So it's just you one of those what? things. Like, I think it, does it affect it? I think it's a little bit different in my perspective because, you know, I, I've only ever had, you know, maybe a one or two deep rotation, you know, yeah. at any given time when I played. I, I don't really remember a time where we had three, four guys that were equally as good as their own light in their own light, you know, to yeah. be able to rotate. And so because of that, we only ever trained that way. Mm -hmm. I think with these guys, you know, the combatant to what you just said is that these guys train in a way that shows different looks, you know, yeah. obviously having one, two, potentially even three running backs in the backfield, you know, to be able to potentially give you a different look to the defense. And yeah. so because of that, I think since they're used to training that way, it's going to be hard to really kind of take them out of that groove. You know what I mean? So if they start giving, you know, a favor to, let's just say Knight or Harris, you know, and kind of leaving, you know, Osmo in the back end or, or maybe even uh, what's the other running back? Child, 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 Isaiah, you know? So um, I think that would might be even a worse thing to do simply because they're already in a, in a group. They yeah. practice every single day, a week, certain formations, having those guys back there. And I think if you guys start taking them out, you know, on the instant, I think mm -hmm. that would be more of a detriment, you know, but if yeah. it was the opposite, if, if running back in practice, it was just one guy taking all the reps. And then on Saturday, you decide to sort of throw four out there at any given time. Again, you're disrupting the flow. But I think I want to say that will that play an effect? Potentially, you never really know, especially yeah. in those deep gains, you know, because again, if a running back's hot, why take him out? Because as an offensive lineman, do you kind of feel like, do you have a a presence of what the running back is going to do behind you? Like, if you're blocking for night, you know he's going to do this move, or you know what he kind of likes. Do you know kind of like the the preference that the running backs have, or is it, hey, uh, I'm just going to do my job and he's going to do what he needs to do? Well, yeah, you you kind of understand the personalities of the different running backs. Well, one thing that I think Coach Green does it is that he teaches the same fundamentals you know, to every single guy, you know, it's usually one cup, one cut, go upfield, get your yep. yards. There's no playing this fancy dancy kind of going back and forth type of game that some running backs in different schools like to play. Hey, it's make your one cut, find the hole and hit it, yeah. you know? So because of that, you start to develop, Hey, it doesn't really matter who's back there. Even if I do know, you know, that the child is different than the night, you yeah. know, in certain, in certain running ways. At the end of the day, we have a job to do. And my job is to make sure that I take care of this gap, move that guy, you know, three feet to the left of me, you know, on an inside zone play, make sure that the running back has an opportunity to make one cut, hit the hole, and then go, go, go home. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Go yard. 
So my yeah. other my other question and kind of this kind of statement is uh, when I was watching, we really are focusing on not not necessarily focusing, but we're getting a lot more action from the left side of the line and more yardage from the left side of the line, which is probably to be expected with them having more of the what reps um, than the right side of the line. And so that, that's what I'm seeing is, is we're getting a lot more yardage from the left and they're kind of tending to run from to the left rather than the right. So I, I kind of just want, hopefully these next two or three games, we're kind of developing the right side a little bit more so that we can run from both sides. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I could definitely kind of understand that since there's a more experience on the left side of the line than the right side of the line, you know, but ultimately, I mean, it could just be, you know, just by chance, you know, not necessarily something that the game plan as far as, you know, hey, we're going to attack heavy on the left, even though maybe there's a little bit more trust on that side than the right, simply yeah. because the guys are young, you know. Yeah. I knew when I was younger, it was the same type of thing. They probably trusted the center and the tackle simply because I had to earn my stripes. And I think these guards are in the right position to be able to say, hey, you know what, we're going to earn our stripes by the end of the year. You know, yeah. it could be a strategy thing that they feel a little more comfortable. But again, it might just be, hey, you know what, we're pretty even across the board besides a couple of plays here and there. You know, it just happened to be we were just a little bit more productive on the left side than the right side. What do we need to do to that right guard and the right tackle in order to kind of straighten them out and maybe be a little bit productive? And that's not to say that they weren't productive, you know, yeah. but obviously you always expect more. Exactly, exactly. Well, and, and they, they did well. They moved the ball. And yeah. some some points with they didn't move it as well as you know we probably would like. There are some stall outs and that I believe that you said second quarter where we didn't score any points as right. Correct. Yep, yep, yep. So, so we got a uh, thirteen first, zero second, nine, and then two. That safety came in that fourth yep. quarter. Yeah. So it, it, we've got some work. I, I think we've got. You know, Johnson did amazing job. I think he was like 24 of 29 or 24 of 30. So a really high percentage of passes being completed. The yardage mm -hmm. doesn't really – is pretty low. But, uh, man, if I was going to say last week before this game, we lose the turnover margin by two, what would you say? We won or lost the game. If we would have said again, if we would have lost? If we – if I told you the turnover margin is going to be plus two for South Dakota, would you have thought it was a win for us or a loss? Uh, I still think it would have been a win for us, you know, yeah, regardless if we turned it over. Yeah, but I think it would have been, you know, obviously it just it makes it tougher. You know, yeah. that's one of the things, one of the pillars that we absolutely go for. We like to hold on to the ball regardless of the situation, yeah. you know, so those turnovers are gut-wrenching. On the field, when you see it happen, it's kind of a moment where you feel like you're in limbo. You're like still trying to process like, dang, oh, my God, I had such a good block. You know, give the quarterback time in certain situations. Oh, the perfect the perfect block. The running back had it all the way in. He was a yard away from the goal, from the from the, from the touchdown, from the end zone. You yep. know, so those sort of things. And you see it and you're like, oh, gosh. So it completely shifts the momentum. Yeah. And it's a scary thing because that momentum can be an absolute killer. You oh, know? yeah. Again, well, it's, I mean, it's just crazy that it didn't affect the score like 24 seven. It, it affected the offense and how moving the ball, but it mm -hmm. did not affect the score, which just shows how good the defense is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's just a dog mentality, you know, yeah. and it's one of those things. I think Bobby does a really good job about challenging, mentally challenging these guys to the point of breaking where he's just like, no, you got to fall in love with this type of stuff. Yeah. I mean, this pain is what you go for. This war is what you go for, you know. And if it's anything less, we don't want it because that's how you create winners, you know. And I think exactly. he does a really good job about creating that winning mindset, you know. And, again, you see it pop off on the defensive because I think there's a little bit more freedom on that defensive side to literally go, hey, you got a job to do, but do it in the, the craziest, you know, most tenacious way that you possibly can do it. And on the offensive side, it's like, okay, you know what, I need to be really disciplined in my blocking scheme. You know, yeah. I, I need to run this route as crisp as I possibly can, you know, in order to help the quarterback, you know, make a play with me. And yeah. so because of that, I think it's a different type of philosophy. But one of the things that I did notice, man, is that we started off pretty strong. But for whatever reason, I felt like we took the pedal off the gas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was really weird because it was like third quarter, like the first quarter, like we said, like in South Dakota was on the brink. Right. And that second quarter, man. I, I don't know what happened because 
they, they had a one good cornerback that was really good and was making some plays, but yeah. you didn't see anything. You didn't see uh, us throwing it down the field like we were, except for, you know, that one huge, I believe, pass to Grossman. Grossman hasn't been in the uh, the play calls at all, except for that one. Um, yeah, well, he had two catches, I two think, catches. 64 yeah. yards. So yeah. give me a two piece, two piece and a biscuit, man, and that's all that matters. So it was nice to see him yeah. have a couple, you know. And I think as the season progresses, they're going to start to utilize it. But there's yeah. no secret, you know. Johnson really is kind of favoring Bergen right now, you yeah. know, for whatever reason. I don't know what he's seeing. I don't know what he's reading. Obviously, you know. But it, I mean, it's something. It's a relationship that's working, you know. Yeah. But one of the things that I did see is that I think a total of, of almost what eleven guys got some type of pass, yeah, you know, throughout the game. Yep. You know, <laughs> regardless if it was you know you know two yards. I think Marcus Knight had one for like two or three yards or something like that. And then you have guys that go in for an average 32 yards with Cole Grossman. So I think that was something that's really, really kind of cool to see. And I think yeah. as the year progresses, he's just going to get more and more comfortable with those guys and those younger guys and those guys that may have did not have the touches this week. I like, again, I'm still rooting for Fonts. I still think he's going to have a couple yeah. huge games this year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think, I think that in this, trying to get some touches to flowers as well, you know, with yeah. that kind of a, an ability, I just think you, you've got to use them somehow, right? You got to use mm-hmm. what you have. Um, and, and who knows what you're going to show, right? Like we've said in this podcast, wh- who knows what they want us to see, what the other team wants to see. So they're going to show what, show what they want to preview. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, going in and seeing this angel, what are you expecting this next week? What do you want to see from the offense? Uh, a little bit. You know what? It's just one of those things. I just think I want to see a little bit more consistency through fourth quarters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, starting off 13 in the first quarter. I want to see that t- same type of scoring throughout all four quarters. Yeah. You know, we had a little bit of a stump that second quarter. And then from there, you know, I just felt like there was so much on the board that we missed out on. And again, it could be strategy, you know, 100%. Yeah. I'm obviously I'm not part of the program anymore, so I can't speak to what the week to week regime is. You know, but it could be strategy. Hey, we're going to keep it really simple. We're not going to show all our cards in order to put us in a position for down the line. Teams yeah. are surprised when we line up in this formation, you know, yeah. whether it be a, a power, a counterplay, an RPO, or, you know, just getting creative with their wide receivers three by one. It doesn't matter. You know, I think uh, I think that's where it's going to come to effect later on in the season. Or it could just be one of those things, you, you know, and I think the only reason I felt that way is because after the game, obviously you're excited because you won. But just kind of feeling the vibe around the team, I just felt like they knew that they could have whooped on this team 40, 50, you know, to seven or whatever the case may have been. You know well, what I mean? It, yeah. Well, it, 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 not, not to say that it didn't feel like a win, but it really, it didn't. To me, I was just like, that's it. Like, <laughs> Like I, I left wanting more, and I don't know if that like that's just the yeah. And I think me, I think like, I think I think that's a good way. That's a good way to put it because and and it wasn't even me that felt it because at the end of the day I was just like twenty four seven sweet dude. I yeah. mean that's a convincing win, you yeah. know. And then when you hear these guys kind of interview afterwards and you hear about Johnson talking a little bit and you could just kind of tell that they're like, hey, you know what? That was not the performance that we wanted to put out. We're yeah. disappointing in ourselves. Even if we though, even though we won twenty four seven, you're like, yeah. well, wow, that's the, you know the type of discipline to have, the type of respect, and the type of expectation that you have for yourself in this program is by far and away, you know, something that you want in in just being a part of something. You know, exactly. you want those guys that are like, hey, you know what, man, that wasn't good enough. We got to be better. You know, exactly. it, it's good that we won against a, you know a tough team again. You know, South Dakota, they play in the in the in the Mount. Uh, the Missouri Mountain, Valley, uh, Missouri Missouri. Valley, Mountain. I was yep. gonna say Mountain West. Uh, the Missouri <laughs> not Valley yet. Conference, not yet. <laughs> you know, which is a, a run-heavy conference against some, you know, really top-tier teams. You yeah. know, and the fact that we came in and there, we beat them like that, and the potential of payoff team is awesome to see. You know, yeah. but in their minds, I felt like they left wanting more for themselves, which yeah. is why I want more for them. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Well, and you know, they, they've got another Missouri Valley team coming in, but we'll get to that later. Um, any final thoughts on offense, man? Uh, man, like you said, I think uh, just really quickly, you know, yeah. special teams, you know, we finally oh. were able to give it to Malik, you know, on one play. Yeah. Um, I think they were kind of forced to do it, but I think at the end of the day, I'm really, really kind of itching for him to get the ball, you know, on that special team side throughout this yeah. year. Um, Patrick punting. You know, had a phenomenal day, averaging 42. Oh 
You know, yeah. I thought that was really, really impressive. And like you said, the running backs had a day. Lucas had a day. It's just one of those things is we just want to continue the season. And hallelujah, we were all healthy again. That's exactly. I well, to mention. Yeah, exactly. Health is the the utmost importance. But you said Patrick. I've got a, I've, I've got I've got to toot his horn again, man. You know, mm-hmm. nine punts, nine total punts, right? Mm-hmm. Six of those nine have been inside the twenty. Mm-hmm. Isn't that ridiculous? Six no. of nine. Yeah. You Brian know, said it. Forward. Brian called it. Yeah, Brian Buscini did call it. He he did say something on an article that he you know. He was yeah. So far. Brian Brian Brashini was a uh, you know our previous I think yep. last year uh, last year punter freshman uh, he took punter a lot of, of the year yeah yep. freshman punter of the year you know took a lot of responsibility um, he decided to leave the program now he's the University of Nebraska and then he was doing pretty well over there uh, but in an article he said that Patrick Roback um, is basically the guy you know and I think we've seen it throughout two games and it's one of those things is if Bobby's good at anything it's a special teams and I think under his guidance he's gonna play a lot of football for a long time. Exactly. Well, and three of those uh, nine have been 50-plus punts. Uh, mm-hmm. Like you said, a 42-43 average. Uh, it went winning the field position, which is always important for us. Um, one thing that is kind of alarming me is we've missed another field goal, uh, which is probably really pissing off. <laughs> Coach Oak, because uh, mm-hmm. we know that he loves his uh, special teams. So uh, that'll be interesting to see what kind of goes on with that and see how they play with that, because I believe um, Adam Botkin was the kicker. Uh, Patrick Rohrbach was the punter. And then I think, uh, ne- is it Nico Ramos? Uh, I Nico? just know Ramos. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ramos. Uh, was doing the kicking. Um, and we haven't seen uh, Cam McCapser, uh since the first game. Um, mm-hmm. So it'd be interesting to see what kind of evolves there and, and see how much we get better at that. So, yeah, I think that's going to be the, the big thing. And again, like I said, I think Bob is going to be able to line that out, just being yeah. a little bit more consistent on some of those things, simply because that's his expectation. That's what the team expects. And I know it's exactly what those players expect too. And then again, shout out to the offensive line. You know, I yeah. thought it was a big improvement from last week to this week, yep. uh, especially on the run game, you know, against a really run heavy team. You know, they, they deal with it all the time in that conference. And so, again, a little bit more productive this week. And now it's the same expectation as last week. Hey, how far can they really go? How good can they really get? You know, yeah. do they start becoming a little bit more consistent on the right side, if that's what you saw? You know, maybe I just didn't pay enough attention about it. You know, but I could definitely see, you know, something to be improved on that right side simply because, you know, they're young guys and they got a lot, a lot of time to play, you know, but well, no time like the present. And we, we've said that before, uh, Angel, is that this six-game, five-game area where, where we have, we have some time to develop this younger yeah. line. So uh, fan base out there, me as well, <laughs> don't get you know hesitant by maybe you know uh, not as impressive uh, line because they're learning, they're, they're, they're growing with each other, they're, they're learning each other. Um, and so give a little bit of grace on that. Um, and so – we, we've got well, that's the thing about it. Grow. That's the thing about it. I'm I'm impressed with them. You know, oh, I yeah. really, really am. You know, yeah. for being able to get you know a, a defensive line brought over to the offensive side. You know, yep. two kind of obviously really solid starters, and then bringing in two young guys into the role. I mean, yep. that that could potentially be a recipe for disaster. Just you know, not having that real big depth. You know, as yeah. uh, in comparison to last year. You know, you think yeah. about last year, you had you know, five guys on that offensive line that had tons and tons and tons of experience coming into this year could be, you know, a point of emphasis to whether or not that's going to be a trouble, you know, for the for the whole football team. But for what they've been able to do, you've seen really, really good play. And again, so it, again, it, it's it's not even giving grace, but it's one of those things. It's like, okay, they show that they can be a good team. How could they can they get? You know, how, exactly. how good can they get? Where's that expectation? You know, obviously as fans, we want the moon. You know, but ultimately it's up to them for them to really decide, like, hey, what do we want to do with this season? How special do we want it to be? You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, yes, uh, next week or this week, sorry, gosh, this week, Indiana State Sycamores. Uh, let's get into it, man. We got yeah. – uh, before we get into the, the, the actual team, uh, our, we got, we, I've got to mention this. You know, they've had some strife in their program. Um our hearts go out to the football team. Yeah. They've lost this last August. They lost uh, three of their brothers. 
um, that have passed away with a motor or a auto vehicle accident. Uh, one I think is still in serious condition. Um, so they've been going through a lot on the football field and then also just trying to heal from that as well. Um, so our hearts go out to you. Um, really say a prayer I mean, for them. Yeah. <laughs> because but, I mean, there's, I there's, there's nothing worse than that, man. Yeah, I mean, obviously I've been on that, um, on that end of losing a couple of brothers myself. Um, just like anybody else. I mean, everybody's lost somebody that they hold near and dear to man. So it's really going it, to, it's really a big season for them, you know, in yeah. that regard, cause they're playing for, for those guys. And so all you can do is send love, send a prayer. Um, and again, just, uh, just respect the game of football, you know, just yeah. respect the game that they bring and, you know, those types of sacrifices that they bring to, to, to the table simply because, you know, it, it's a, it's a tough game. You know, exactly. and there's tough moments and some of them are going to be tougher than others. And this is a team that's 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 hurting a little bit. So let's just give them the love, you know, exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's get into it, man. Indiana State uh, last year, they were three and five in the Missouri Valley uh, total yeah. of five and six in the uh, overall. That made them be the seventh ranked t- or seventh in the Missouri Valley. Uh, their preseason ranking in the Missouri Valley is number 10 out of 11. Uh, they lost 16 um, starters from last year's team that have graduated. So they, they brought in some guys. They've had some transfers come in. Their coach, Kurt, I think Mallory, Mallory uh, played or coached in Wyoming, the same mm-hmm. school that uh, Brenton Vegan was coaching at. So they do know each other down there. Uh, so they've got some connection with that, but their season, they're one and one. Uh, they played North Alabama and they won in overtime 17 to 14. And then they lost last week uh, really bad <laughs> to Purdue 56 to zero. Uh, so this is the, I believe the first meeting of Indiana state and Montana. Uh, yeah. we, we played some other Missouri Valley teams but have not played indiana state so it'll be interesting to see um they've got some issues that they're working through they they like to turn over the ball man uh which with our defense that could be catastrophic yeah i mean that's so, really i mean obviously these past couple of weeks defense has been you know that kind of that that knight in shiny armor uh yeah. really kind of putting us to the next level of play just in general um, but I think this is going to be probably their biggest week, you know, yeah. potentially throughout the whole season. Yeah. I really, really believe that, you know, yeah. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm making some bold predictions right now. I'm calling Fauci actually getting one this week. Ooh. I'm calling Justin Ford getting back on the board this week and getting one too. You know oh, what I mean? Man. I'm talking about, you know, potentially double digit sacks, you know, I just double think, digit sacks. I, I think so, man. I, oh I my goodness. These, these are bold predictions. You know, maybe the first two aren't necessarily as bold, but the third one's definitely <laughs> bold. I mean, we've been averaging, you know, I mean, five, five a game at least. Four and a half, five, yeah. Yeah, yep. four and a half, five. You know, and again, I just think with how the defense, how we play, the speed to which we play and how confusing it potentially can be at, you know, I can definitely see, you know, um, I mean, close upwards of that 10, you know. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I think agree it's with you. I agree with you, but I'm like, yeah, I could see Ford getting an interception. I think Fouch, Fouch could get an interception, but then imagine 10 sacks. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I mean, it's a big game. Be, oh, my I mean, Lord. That's, oh just my my expectation. that's just my expectation, man. You know, I have to throw something <laughs> like that out there. You know, I, yeah, I got to well, come crazy with it. Exactly, exactly. Well, and, and you might not be far, too far off because, you know, going into this Indiana State man team, uh, their quarterback is a junior college um, out of Butler Community College. Uh, he's at 22 of 44 on the year with uh, 224 yards, one touchdown, mm-hmm. and four interceptions. Uh, so he, he's not he's doing 50% <laughs> completion with four interceptions. Could be catastrophic. I don't think he's seen a defense. Maybe, maybe Purdue. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't. I don't even know. I, I I follow the Big Ten. I really don't think Purdue is is defense is. I don't know. I haven't watched Purdue, but I I look at our defense <laughs> and I I really don't see them getting to us. But 
anyways, yeah. beyond the point, beyond the point, uh, their running back, they have two running backs that they kind of throw out there. Uh, Justin Dinka uh, is the returning running back. He's had this year 22 attempts with 81 yards, uh, 3.7 average. Um, and then they have another running back, T. Hodge, who's a transfer from Tennessee. Uh, he's mm-hmm. had about 29 attempts this year and 110 yards and a 3.8 average as well. So they do like to run the ball. I don't really think that they're trying to find themselves with a, a new quarterback. Um, but both have rushed for 70 plus yards uh, against North Alabama. So probably consider them probably wanting to run the ball this year or this yeah. game. Uh, they do have a an amazing wide receiver. Uh, his name is Dante Hendricks. Six Isn't three, he like two, humo- yeah, he's humongous. Six country. three, two ten. Yeah. Uh, preseason second team all all conference for the Missouri Valley. Uh, he did really well against Purdue. He had five catches for ninety yards against Purdue. Uh, did not have really any for the, the previous game. Uh, but man, that's a, that's a big wide receiver. So it'll be interesting to see how they line him up. Yeah, I mean, that's Sammy size, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ryan yeah. Simpson size, you know yep. I mean? That's exactly what you want in a team. And, again, it's again, it, it's tough to say, man. They're just in a rebuilding phase. That's what yeah. they're truly in. I mean, losing yep. 16 guys from last year, obviously the tragedy has happened a couple months ago. And, yep. you know, just starting to try to create a name and just, just get through, you know. Yeah. I think yeah. that's kind of, you know, the mantra of the season is just, just get through. Just finish the season, you know. Next yeah. game, let's see what we can do. What can we produce? You know, so at this point in time, it's it. They literally have nothing to lose. Well, nothing. And, yeah, and their special teams hasn't. They've got an okay kicker, but their punter has kind of struggled too. His average is about thirty-seven yards a punt, um, and he's had fifteen punts. So uh, I will say this: they're home. They, they are home. They do that. have the home field advantage, and it's going to be hot. It's about going to be in the eighties with 70 percent humidity. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, and Angel and I were talking about this off off air. But you know, the humidity, like Angel, you, you said, is going to be the the key. But I also said, you know, uh, they're getting away from this horrible smoke, so they might that might play an effect too. That they may be able to breathe a little bit better over there than over here. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think you had mentioned that somebody had given us a question or something like that. What was the question again? Yeah, let's. Um, you want to finish this and then go to the question, or do you want to go? Well, it kind of ties that? into it. Kind of ties into traveling so a little okay. bit. So let's just so, uh, let's read it off. Let's uh, egress. Um, beware of the D uh, from Duluth, <laughs> Minas- Duluth, Minnesota. The last two <laughs> matchups east of the Mississippi did not favor us, Angel. In your career, did you ever play in a road game that was a longer trip? You know, example, east of the Mississippi. If so, mm-hmm. what are your most challenging aspects of these games? Do you both think our performance will be impacted by the longer trip? Well, great question. You know yeah. what? I think it, um, it really kind of dumbs down to just being not home. You know, you get so comfortable being home. You enjoy being in front of your fans. You know, you get to sleep in a little bit more kind of, you know, the days leading up to it. You're not having to worry about travel, you know, yeah. eight hours or so across the country. Um, traveling's tough. Traveling yeah. tough. It gets you out of your routine a little bit, you know, because you don't do it as often as 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 you play at home. Obviously, this year, I think I think out of all our games, seven of them are going to be at home, right? And so, um, I, thought I, so. I, I, could, I think it's I about seven, so. yeah. you know, which is quite a few games that are going to be at home. So, you get used to being in a certain routine. When you get out of that routine, it does something to you a little bit mentally, which is why usually teams that go on the road, they don't have as good as winning percentage, winning percentages as, as opposed to being home. Yeah. I do think when I did travel, regardless of the distance, um, just getting out of the routine was the biggest thing, you know? And I think one thing that Bobby's really trying to implement is, hey, we're on a routine every single time that we leave this campus, but we're on the same exact routine here when we're on campus, you know, we're yeah. playing at our, we're playing at our home, and I think that was one thing that really kind of stood out to me those last couple of years that I played under him is that regardless of it, when we did travel, we kept it to a T. We try to keep the same meetings, the same amount of time, the same schedule. Have you home and in bed or in the hotel around the same time too, just so you can emulate the same routine kind of feel. That regardless of where you go, you're going to be on the same type of schedule. Obviously, yeah. trying to factor in travel. 
Yeah. You know, even on the travel thing, it was it was, hey, get your rest, get some sleep wherever you can. We feed you up, we load you up with food so that way you guys don't feel like you're hungry or that you're sitting here just kicking tires. You know, obviously the trainers, if you're if you're feeling sick or something like that, they'll do their best to kind of accommodate you. And so, um, but yeah, I just think the change of environment is a little bit always a little bit tougher. You know, yeah. just knowing that you're at somebody else's home, it's an exciting thing simply because you love to win in front of the opposing team's crowd. But at the same time, you're like, dang, this is not the same as being as Washington Grizz. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that might be something for some of the younger guys that they might struggle with. I'm not saying that they will, but sometimes I can definitely see it's a different feel. It's a different vibe when you travel across the country and you play at the opposing team's field, you know, because you're not surrounded by, by the glamour of 30,000 fans or almost yeah. 30,000 fans. You're not surrounded by the glamour of, you know, you the, the game day environment. And you have to walk down that tunnel and you hear the echo of the fans screaming or you hear the fans outside waiting for you, giving you high fives. I mean, you're going to a school that, you know, they might be able to fill up a stadium, but, I mean, it's not the same comparison as far as 30,000 people screaming your name, you no, know? No, and they, their, their so, stadium does not look like it's – It's it's not – It's a, a high school stadium. It's a glorified yeah. high school stadium. So It is. It is. <laughs> it is. So I will say this. I see – I think that the older veteran guys are so used to, hey, it doesn't really matter. But this yeah. is going to be one of those questions that I have for this week. How are they going to be able to perform some of these young guys on the road when they're yeah. dealing with not the same environment? No, nope. because you know, some people love love that jersey. You know, they yeah. love being in front of that crowd. Now let's see how love the how much these boys love to play football. That's gonna be my real question this week. So did it affect me? You know what? I was actually okay. You know, I think early on I I did fall into that little bit of the hype of wow, I want to play in the biggest games that I possibly can. And then you travel to Sac State, and you're like, this is not the biggest play <laughs> game that I can possibly play in, you know? <laughs> yeah, 8,000 um, fans. <laughs> 8,000 fans. But I, at the same time, you know, I got out of that. It just really kind of, again, it made me realize that I was like, I'm not here to be in front of those fans. I'm here to play football and be a damn good football player. You know, so I, I, I got out of it pretty quickly, but I can definitely see how some guys could be like, oh, it's just not the same. I I don't even know what – I don't even think that it's going to be 8,000 fans at Indiana State. I don't think it's going to hold that much. But, yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, do I think it's going to affect us? I don't think it's going to affect us to the point where we're going to lose. I don't uh, think so either. Means. Um, yeah. I think it might affect the score a little bit. Will it be that first quarter? Will we kind of search a little bit to find our footing? I think we might, you know. I don't think it's going to affect the score that much because – Honestly, the, this offense that they have that's going to be going against us is 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 struggling. Um, their defense, it's got some good guys, good some good um, beasts on that defense, um, but I, I don't see them being able to score enough points to beat us with our defense. Um, yeah, and, the, and the only reason why I agree with you simply because they're home. You know, the confidence yeah. level is a little bit bigger. You yeah. know, a little uh, not, not a little bit bigger, but a little bit different. Simply yep. because, you know, regardless of the game, at the end of the day, they're showing out of friends, in front of their friends, in front of their family, that yep. we're able to make the trip out to Indiana in order for them um, to potentially play. And so yeah. because of that, I do think it will affect the score as opposed to them traveling all the way over to Missoula, Montana, because it's really easy to get down and out when you have, again, you know, 26,000 fans just screaming at you, you know, when you're trying to make a play call on offense. You know what I mean? Well, so and it's a very, very different environment. Yeah, and I don't think they've actually won against a top five, a top ten team in the last probably six or seven years. Yeah. Um, yeah so, so this is going to be their Super Bowl against us because we're going yep. into their, their stadium. They're going to play North Dakota State. They're going to play South Dakota State. They're they're not going to be you know, a, a scared of the moment because they they they're facing these moments all the time in their mm -hmm. conference. Um, but yeah, they'll they'll be up for this game. So going into defense, man, they've got some they've got some guys. So their linebacker, uh, Jeffrey Brown, uh, in 2021 was the newcomer of the year. He was a third team All-American on the freshman side team, I think from the, the steel stats, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So he's one of the main experienced guys back on their defense. Uh, so far, he's had 17 tackles, one tackle for lost. Um, so last season he was had 61 tackles. So he's, you know, he's on par to go over that as well. So um, Ryan or Rylan Cole, their free safety. He's second on the team with tackles this year, guys. 16 tackles. He's got two and a half tackles for loss. He also has two interceptions. Last season he was about 30 tackles. So he's 
he's on par to, to break what he did last year as well. Uh, one guy that I'm really interested, but actually two guys, uh, they've got some guys on the defensive line and defensive end. So their defensive end, Chris Reed Jr., 6'2", 245, nine tackles, two and a half sacks. Uh, last season had five tackles for loss. Um, so he's been he's been pretty uh, going in the ta- the the sack. Been area. in the gym. Good for yeah. him. Uh, their defensive line, their uh, nose tackle or whatever they're running, six one three ten. He has four tackles, one and a half tackles for loss, and one and a half sacks. That guy is a beast. He has like one of the. I, I looked at his profile. Like he has one of those like really small like <laughs> jerseys, and it's like. Woo! It was it was hilarious. Uh, so Gian, Gianni Belazar was the defensive lineman that six one three ten. So they've got some guys. They play in the Missouri Valley. They're not going to have you know they're not not having talent uh, if that mm-hmm. makes any sense at all. Um, but I don't think they're going to be able to compete long term with us. I don't think so either. You know, and again, no. being three ten, you said what he was six one or six feet. Six one three ten. Six one six one. That's a big boy for being six one. Yeah. You know, I mean, and so I think uh, this is one of the this is one of the games as particularly with that guy. You know, again, a little bit of a bold prediction that he might start off strong and beefy, uh, but yeah. it might have been one of those things that as the game progresses with our tempo, with our speed, we just might be able to overpower them with consistent bashing of the heads and you know, kind of yeah. punching in the mouth. You know, so that's one of those things that I'm kind of expecting it. You know, I think this week's going to really rely on, obviously, AJ and McGinnis and Walker just being able to communicate really effectively in order to obviously put them in the best position to win. And obviously, mm-hmm. AJ relaying that message over to, you know, the right side of the line, too, to just be able to make sure that they're, that they're lined out as well. You know, exactly. so I'm really kind of leaving it on AJ and Hunter, uh, or not Hunter, but just McGinnis, yeah, yeah. Um, to be able to kind of lead this upcoming week and see yeah. what they could essentially do, you know. That's the yeah. cool part about it is that they have two leaders on their offensive line front. And just like anything else, man, the offensive line is going to help win the game. And we exactly. need to have a good week. You know, that's the expectation, especially if you want to see growth out of those young guys. Yeah. One, well, you know, they're Indiana State's offense. You know, they're averaging eight and a half points a game, 210 yards uh, a game. You know, their third down percentage is like 16 percent. So, you that, know, yeah. it, it, it's going to have to take something drastic for them to make this a game. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I think that we'll, we'll pull it out. I think we're going to have some good games. Like you said, uh, our defense is going to really be eating this week and it'll be interesting to see what happens. Exactly. Exactly, so. man. So, I mean, again, I guess let's talk about the predictions a little bit. Unless you yeah. Else yeah. Add. Um, so I'm kind of pissed off, dude. Like, seriously, you won last week by freaking one point. I know. <laughs> one, I know. One. I was point. thinking about it. I was oh. thinking about it. I was just like, okay. I, I was like, I know I bet three. They got seven. And then oh. on this side, you know, what did I end up giving them? 35, uh, right? You said 38 3. 38 3. So you, you had a differential of mine than plus 18 than the score and mine was plus 19. Ah, see, there so, we go, baby. Gosh. Well, are you making a chart on this? I am. I've got the chart right here. Okay. All right. Put one next to my name. I got it circled for you. All right, man. All right. That's all that matters. Uh, so, yeah. Gosh, it feels good to be a winner. You know what I mean? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, goodness. Because the first week we tied. <laughs> yeah, man. That was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. I knew I messed up that first week. Uh, No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all, all right. right, man. Well, what are you thinking for this week? You know what? Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go you first because I you was went first last, last week. You so. went first last week. And I just want to let you guys know, I think of these things right now. You know, I'm coming up with a prediction. I, in the last two weeks, we're literally just off the top of the dome. I yeah. don't sit here and start thinking about it's really off intuition as opposed to Adam. He takes Amen. his time, looks at every <laughs> stat in the book. We are total opposites when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. You know? So, so. Um, the first week I didn't, the second week, yes, I did. And this week, uh, I've been thinking it because I really want to beat you this week. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm calling it this on the okay. defensive side. We only let them score three. I really, really, truly believe that, especially now that I know that our average is about eight. 
yeah, you know, eight eight point six or whatever the case may be. Yep. So I think three on our defensive side, just because I think our defense is that good. It could easily be a goose egg, but I think three is going to be that safe bet. You yep. know, I really could, I could really could see it being a shutout. And I'll even make it a little bit of a bolder prediction. The first half, I don't think they cross the fifty. I don't think. I don't. Think, I, don't I don't think they'll cross the forty. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Jesus. Um, on our offensive side. You know, again, playing with some guys that I do think have, you know, some players out there on their defensive side of the ball. I still think it's going to be a little bit of a different game than it was last week. You know, yeah. with a team with dealing with 16 guys that are out, I'm going to call it kind of like that first week. I'm going to go 49-3. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Forty. So we are in – like simpatico with with the uh, opponent i said three points as well i don't think mm-hmm. they're gonna be able to score against us um so i said uh 35 to 3 35 to 3 35 to 3 okay so, so that means a wiggle room of one touchdown in between if they end up for 42 okay so all right, so, all right. so you said 49 to 3 right 49 to 3 ah man i just get a gut <laughs> feeling man 49 like- to 3 okay I feel like potentially kind of, again, you know, kind of the vibes that I got from this past week, I felt yeah. like they knew they could have done more. And yeah. I think I'm going to be able to see that this week. You're going to see that, especially being on the road, you know, again, ah, shoot, yeah, I'm going to stick with 49. Okay. I'm going to stick with 49. Okay. You're yeah. going to text me and be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'll text you right after. It's like, hey, you know what? I changed my mind. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. Man, predictions, man. Let's go some predictions. Let's big sky predictions. Oh, big sky predictions. Okay, yes. I'm just going to get it out the way. All right, yes. this is really, really lucky days to go really, really loose, but I think it'll be kind of in a similar structure. So I'm yep. going big sky champions. I'm going Montana. I don't okay. see that there's no reason why they don't do it. This is a little bit of a bold one. I think a lot of people see Montana State as number two. I see Weber State as number two. I think they're always pretty consistent. They always find their way to make their way up to number one or number two. I don't foresee them being number three. I think tied at three can go either way, either Sac State or Montana State. I can kind of see them going for that third and fourth kind of tie. Then from there, a little bit taboo. Usually seeing Eastern in the top three, top four. You know, I'm kind of going tied for fourth. I can see them going between Cal Poly and Eastern. So fourth and fifth, or I guess fifth and sixth, you're going to go find kind of for Eastern or Poly. Then from there, you start playing for a race to the bottom. I think Idaho is going to be right in the middle of the pack, followed by, oh, gosh. I want to say Portland State, but I think Northern Arizona is going to get the scoop on them. And then we're going to finish off the last kind of couple games or the couple teams with Idaho State, Northern Colorado, and I think UC Davis is unfortunately on the bottom end of this whole list. Idaho State, UNC, and uh UC Davis, yeah. So the, the, they'll oh, be okay. uh, they'll be uh, nine or, or 10, 11, 12. Wow, Davis, yeah, so I know. Davis just Davis just almost beat South Dakota State. I don't know, this man. Last I'm, weekend. I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm gonna again a little bit taboo. <laughs> I just for whatever reason, for whatever reason, and normally, again, that's a completely kind of probably ha- half assed prediction. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But um, I yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could, they could potentially be in the middle of the pack or maybe in the top of the pack. Again, I'm just kind of going off of, I guess, kind of what you hope for, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so, again, UC Davis, primarily, they've never really been kind of the bottom end of the, of the pack. But I'm going to do a little bit of a taboo thing and see how they end up doing this week, even though they really did have a good game last week. They did. They did. Uh, yeah. All right. I do think my... South you, South Dakota State's overrated, though. I will say that. I do think that. Really? You think I so? I think they're overrated. I think they're overrated really? by a little bit. Really? I think you're overrated okay. by a little bit. All right. Well, here's mine. I've got Montana and Sac State uh, number one uh, tied. Yeah. They're going to tie for this year. Uh, number three, I guess you would say, is Montana State. Okay. Uh, I have UC Davis and then Eastern Washington. Okay. And then I have NAU. So I have I have UC Davis, Eastern Washington, and NAU having the same record in conference. Okay. Uh, I have Weber State right after uh, NAU. And then I have Idaho, Cal Poly, Idaho State, 
and Northern Colorado not even winning a game this year. They're horrible. Jesus, Jesus. They're horrible. Man, I made a, I made a terrible call with you today. It's not a thing about it. Man, it's all okay. <laughs> Give me shit about it, guys. Give me shit about it. I want to hear it all. Uh, I'm, just, I think, I'm just doing it to rile up the pack. That's I think N- I point. think NAU is going to be a team that it, if they play all their cards right, they could be up in the top echelon of teams. I really think that they they have some momentum in their team. Um, and man, some of these, if you go through some of these schedules, oh my lord, like Sac State, how easy of a schedule compared to ours do they have to you know have the Big Sky title? We have a a horrid back end of our schedule where we play, I believe, like three of the four top teams in the preseason poll, and mm-hmm. Sac State doesn't. It, it is mm-hmm. ridiculous how even uneven it is. Uh, that's why. Well, know, that's why they have them top uh, three right there. You know, I just yeah. I'm always hopeful. I think I I have a lot of respect for the Weber State program. Oh yeah, which is yeah. why you know I think I'm always going to have them in the upper echelon of just being a top team. And yeah. for time and time again, you know, the years that I think that they're not going to do well, they won't perform as good as they do. Yeah. I've always seen them either take the big sky or be top two or tie yep. for the big sky or share it, you know, so those sort of things. So I'm always going to have them. Again, really kind of going down the list, you know, similar in some ways. I think, you know, Sac State's going to be there with Montana State. I do think Montana, you know, Montana State um, are going to have some of those, those more difficult challenges down the road. And you just don't know, you know, especially yeah. with a young quarterback like Tommy. It's hard to really kind of say, you know, he's yeah. shown some really, really good flashes of greatness. They had obviously had a, a crazy good game last week, beating their opponent in the 60s to, I think, one score or something like that. But again, still young quarterback. So I'm just kind of playing off a of logic right there, following by Eastern. They're always going to be a pretty solid team. But I think Cal Poly is always pretty competitive, especially these past couple of years. And then you go to the bottom echelon of teams, obviously, Idaho, Northern Arizona, Portland State, Idaho State, Northern Colorado. And I'm just really – there's no logic to UC Davis, so <laughs> kill me, guys. I really just said that just to say that. I need a spot uh, to fill, and I said, you know what? I'm going to go something different. Nice, nice. So one thing that, that's interesting is Sac State, they've already had their bye. They had their bye last week. I know. That sucks. Isn't that Damn, nuts? Week. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, gosh. That sucks. That I'm is. That's... so exhausted. <laughs> that, that is like something I like saw, and I'm like, oh, my Lord, that's going to really suck. You know what sucks too is that they probably just still practice just as hard. Like there was no ch- change. Oh in the yeah. Temple. yeah, 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 crazy. Yeah. All right, man. Well, you know, like we said, rate, review, the and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, we uh, do this for you guys. We're just couch potatoes, so we want to hear from you. If uh, you don't like uh, Angel's UC Davis pick, totally. Uh, yeah, let me know. Up. <laughs> let them know. <laughs> I'm trying to piss off one person in particular, so I hope they heard it. <laughs> it's probably somebody from your home, your home, California, man. They're gonna, yeah, they're probably. gonna get you. So. Probably they'll know. They'll know when they hear it. Exactly, exactly. Well, uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, as always, and we'll hear you back here next week. Uh yeah. go Grizz. Go Grizz right on.